thank the Lord for the privilege and the ability to be here today and uh, for you being here as well. We're going to continue on a theme that we uh, started a couple of Sundays ago concerning the love of God. And uh, praise the Lord. So, I'll give you one of these scriptures. <laughs> Turn to Jeremiah 31, I think. I'm going to read, I want us to read the first four verses here, just as a, um, I'm going to hit other scriptures, but just as a um, background. Uh, beginning at verse number one, at the same time said the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord. The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old to me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and, and shall, shall go, go forth in the dances of them, them that make merry. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Yes. Amplify it, Lord God, and bless your people today again. In Jesus' name, take control, Lord God. Have your way. We'll honor you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to talk more, as I said, about God's love for us. God's love for us. The Lord, some few weeks ago, talk, spoke to me about um, his love for his people, and he wants us to be assured of his love for us. We're in days now where there's so much going on, and as we spoke before, if you start naming all the things that just doesn't seem to be promising, it can challenge your faith, and it can make you wonder what is the immediate future going to be like. And uh, But we, as his people, are to be reassured God promised that there were certain things that are going to take place on the earth but I remember one scripture he says when these things happen see that you be not troubled he said these things must come to pass so we may see things more and worse than what we see now but we have an assurance from God hallelujah for the redeemed and then when things get really like they're out of hand, helter, skelter, then the Bible says, lift up your heads, look up. Because your redemption is drawing now. God loves his people. As a matter of fact, the Bible says God so loved the world. Hallelujah. Every race, total of his creation, he loves us. And um, there, there's uh, some scriptures here that uh, talks about his loving kindness, and I'm not sure how many I'll mention, but uh, the word loving kindness uh, 
it means it denotes affectionate kindness produced by deep felt personal love. The word denotes affectionate kindness produced by deep felt personal love. God's loving kindness. Hallelujah. It's a communicable attribute of God. It will touch and affect others. And uh, there's words like merciful kindness, kindness, mercy, pity, favor, and goodness. All these stem from that word, God's loving kindness. And mercy, you see that in the Bible a lot even from Genesis to Revelation. And it's a communicable attribute of God and expresses God's goodness and love for the guilty and miserable. So if you are any one of those, you can say, mercy. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And this word mercy includes pity, compassion, gentleness, and forbearance. God is merciful. And it's said that the word grace, mercy, or has respect to man's wretchedness. David said, have mercy on me, Lord. Then grace has in view man's culpability or responsibility for a fault or wrong or man's being the blame for his own condition. Grace. And I, I believe we need both of them, right? Hallelujah. Uh, one man was saying, God, Paul was, when he was writing his letters, uh, he would say, grace and peace. But when he was writing to the pastors, he said, grace, mercy, and peace. I find that to be healthy and helpful for me. Glory to God. God loves us, saints. He loves us. Just a brief review from last time we talked about understanding and receiving God's love. How many remember that? Receiving, understanding and receiving God's love through justification Tribulation and propitiation. Go through trials. We want to see and understand God's love. We don't want to think that God's mad with us and out to get us and all of those kind of thoughts. But to see his love in the midst of it. God's always looking for a way to help us and minister his grace to us. Because he's good. He doesn't. He doesn't have to try to be good. It comes very natural to him. God is good. And when I remember in the scriptures, someone came to Jesus and he depicted himself as the God man, the man of God, or the servant. And so came said, good master, what, what, what must I do? And heard eternal life. And Jesus said, why are you calling me good? At first I couldn't understand that. 
Why would Jesus say that? I mean, I can understand a preacher saying, but Jesus, but he was operating as the son of God. He was showing us how to operate, isn't that right? He turned around and said, there's none good but God. Wow. But he's good. Hallelujah. So understanding and receiving God's love. People are looking for answers. You know, you turn on the TV and there's so much going on and you can't look at it but for so long unless you have a very open mind, a positive attitude about the outcome. Otherwise, you find yourself feeling really bad and sometimes fearful. But thank God we don't have to be afraid. Because we know the answer to this depraved lostness of humanity. And, uh, but in the midst of all these things that are going on, COVID, the wildfires, the, the, all of the things that have taken place in our cities, the killings, uh, and, you know, people are looking to the church for answers. They know that they don't have the answer. They know that the politicians do not have the answer. They're struggling so bad now, they don't really know what to do. But, but there are people looking for a word from God through their leaders. What is God saying in the midst of all of that? God has a word for us too. Hallelujah. God says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. I know my thoughts. I know my plans that I have for you. Thoughts of peace, plans to do you good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what it looks like. No matter what is portrayed in this universe. I know my think thoughts and plans for you. I heard the writer says he's able to do exceeding. Abundantly. Above all that we can ask or think. If you can think it he can do more than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say to those that are wondering what God is thinking, wondering what God is saying and wondering, God says, focus on his love. He said, I love you with an everlasting love. Trials will not destroy your hope. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then God began to talk to me. He said, I want you to begin to do some themes. And he said, people are going to begin to grow. And some people call it series preaching. Taking a theme and just preaching several times. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, people says, I get it. I get it. God loves me. He's not angry with me. He's not out to get me. He's out to do me good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to go back with me to creation. Genesis. There. Sister Minister Rose did tap, tap into that a little bit on last week as well. In the beginning, if you want to know God's plan, his original plan, you, you have to go back to the beginning. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. If I, don't, if I want to know the purpose of a thing, I need to go back to the origin. The creator, the one that created it. What did he have in mind? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's see what he says here in Genesis 1. Verse 26. And God 
said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Somebody say dominion. Glory to God over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. The Bible goes on to say, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them and God blessed them. Hallelujah. And God said be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Look at the image that God had in mind when he made humanity. Glory to God. He gave us dominion over all living. Glory to God. That's what he wants us to understand. But then uh, uh, the image of God, the image of God. The Bible says nobody, no one has seen God at any time only begotten son he has declared him glory to God uh, look at what these uh, I don't want you to look at Genesis 2 here go a little further verse 15 and the Lord God took the man put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Oh, glory to God. My God. And you know the story how man made a choice uh, there was there was there was one one commentator said the chief emotional attribute of God is love his chief emotional attribute is love John verse John 4 says he that loves not knoweth not God because God is love. His chief emotional attribute is love. Now, now, now let's look at the, uh, 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 some of the things this uh, commentator said, and I thought it was quite interesting. Made in his image, right? He created us with the capacity to love. That is to receive it and give it. He created us with the capacity to give it and receive it. We're made in his image and his likeness. Somebody said, I, I can't love that person. No, 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 no. That's not what the scriptures bear us out. He created us with that capacity made like him in his image and likeness after he made man the bible says he looked around and says that's good everything about man was good because God made him in his image and in his likeness hallelujah glory to God there's a lyrics of a song I heard the man said he said, the greatest thing one can ever learn in this life is to love and to be loved and returned. The greatest thing one can ever learn in this life is to, is to love and to be loved in return. One of the greatest things in this life, he said, there's something, there's something significant. There's something purposeful in our lives. If we're made in his image and in his likeness, 
if we were made, if we exist for a purpose. Now, let me go on. The Bible, well, it bears us out here. Another thing was mentioned that God's chief governmental attribute is self-determination. His chief governmental attribute is self-determination. The capacity to choose. The capacity to make choices. And we are made in his image. And in his likeness. The capacity of choice is necessary for love to be a meaningful expression. Are you with me? He, 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 if he had made us a robot, then it wouldn't be a meaningful expression of our love to him. Isn't that right? So he couldn't make us like that. But he made us with the capacity to love and to be loved. The capacity to choose. So God set man in the garden. In the midst of trees, many trees. He had to give him a choice. And the writer said, if a choice is to be valid, it must have something to choose from. Are you hearing me? Further, if the choice is to be valid, there must be respect for the choice made. God, in order to treat man fair, all right, he had to give him the right to choose regardless to the consequences. So he told him, he said, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Someone said, why in, the world, why in the world would God do that to man knowing that he would? I just told you. Isn't that right? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, thou shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. He put the choice for him. He had to see and give him that right if he was going to be the kind of person that would fellowship on that plane. He made him with the capacity to fellowship with him, but he had to give him a choice. God's, the writer goes on to say God's chief moral attribute yeah. is holiness. Yeah. Somebody say created in his image. Man was created like God that he would be able to fellowship with God. Someone says, and the Bible backs it up in Revelation, man was created for God's pleasures. Somebody say pleasure. What do you mean? That is the pleasure of loving us, God loving us, and being loved by us. Wow. He created us for his pleasure. This is God takes pleasure in loving us. God takes pleasure in receiving our love. One writer says, he said, what is the great first and great commandment? He said, the first and great commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart with all of thy mind, with all of thy soul, and all of thy strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We were made to receive from God. 
and we were made to love him back and we were made to love one another yeah. hallelujah 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 yeah. hallelujah glory so if man was created for God's pleasure then his basic purpose for existence are you with me yes. has to be rooted in yes. fellowship with God yes. 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 you want your life to take on yes. Yes. peace yes. fulfillment yes. down here yes. this vertical must be intact. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. And so we go on here. We see that he made a choice. The fall of man. And it brought great sorrow to God. Because God loved man so much. He wanted him to have the best. He wanted the best for his life. But he had to give him the right to choose. And he had to respect the choice that he made. My God. Is that love or what? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that, 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 that talks to me a little bit. You know, sometimes even in, in families and husbands and wives and sons and daughters, and we, we try to make people do. You see, we, we, we're not acting right when we try to make people do something. If you're really going to love them, you got to give them the right to make choices. Isn't that right? My God, my God. Mm. Mm. The fall of man brought great sorrow because God loved them so much. He knew that his life was going to be filled with calamities because of the choice that he made. But he still had to do it. We move on to the law of Moses and the Ten Commandments. Another junction. And just briefly, life exists on two planes. That's what one writer said. The vertical and the horizontal. Vertical is our relationship with God. The horizontal is our relationship with others. God gave the Ten Commandments. The first four or five deals with our relationship with God. And the rest deals with our relationship with people. That pattern. Look at somebody. It's a pattern. Hallelujah. Throughout the Bible. Love the Lord with all of our hearts. Love our neighbor as ourselves. Hallelujah. Because somebody say the vertical got to be first though. He says seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. My God. Hallelujah Jesus. Glory to God. He's good. Mm. Then we move on to the cross. Mm. The next big junction in history. The purpose of the coming of Jesus Christ was to make it possible for man to be restored into the image of God. And so in restored fellowship with God, man could be renewed and once again, somebody say once again, answer the basic purpose for existence. 
Does God love us or what? He loves us. I thought about it. It is so amazing that God would do such a thing to you and I for us. A lot of the skeptics and critics really question God's love. They don't understand. Hallelujah. The things that God did for us. Had he stopped at the first or the Old Testament, it still would have been sufficient. He could have said, well, I did my best, but man, he did it to himself. But he didn't stop there. God's heart is love. God's heart is love. So if I try to calculate God's love on the basis of some little small frustration that I experience down here, then, then I'm not doing myself justice. I'm operating on a small mindedness when I should see the big picture and the scope of how God operates and what he has done on Calvary for me. Bible says in 1 John, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Gave himself. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. And God, in listening to God, he just began to speak to me about what he want to do for us and help us to understand his love for us. Too many times we question God's love. I don't know about you, but sometimes it happens, you know, when we're dealing on a smaller plane, we're questioning God's love. Lord, why do you let this happen? Why do you let this happen? And, and, and you know, and, 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 it's, and, and it's like God says, you, you, you're, you're thinking too small now. You're not understanding what I've done for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Said, I've done too much for you for you to question my love based on some little, some little thing that maybe you even caused it yourself. <laughs> no, 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 we, we, we don't want to do that to God, do we? God is good. So he began to talk to me about distorted images of God. Part of our problem is there are distorted images. He said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And, and I heard one writer said, that, so the saying comes to pass as a result of the things that happened to us. And man created God in his own image. You, you missed that. Man created God in his own image. So distortion, distorted images of God. And I said, God... What are some of those distortion among us? And by way of TV, and God, I'm going to give this out. He said, some see God as a distant God. He said, some see him as an unpleasable God. Some see him as a God who abandons. When the going gets really tough, God ain't there for him. He said, some see God as a partial God. Shows partiality, partial treatment. Some see him as a legalistic God, strict. See, some see him as just too busy. See, some see him as a God that's just plain unconcerned. He's looking down and seeing the deplorable situation in the world but he's just unconcerned. So I wrote these things down. He says, God, God, we, we need to see what the word says about you. Isn't that right? Oh, I think we all guilty. We all got some twists, twists and distortions about God. Isn't that right? 
We, we, can, we can quote what the word says, but somewhere down in our love receptors, they've been so damaged until we cannot understand and see a God for who he really is. God is good. I remember God telling me one time I was going through, I was so frustrated, and I felt like God. And God said, he said, son, he said, I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't know what you're struggling with, but I'm good. <laughs> like my wife, I can talk, tell, tell them myself, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said, I'm good. He said, I'm good. So we have to try to understand more about the goodness of God. God is a good God. And those twisted images affect how we function in our relationship with God. God is good. He's so good. And a lot of these twists and distortions come from our upbringing. And I was just kind of talking to him. He was telling about sometimes um, images in childhood, unpleasable parents, Sometimes loved ones are abandoned either through death or whatever, uh, uh, you know, and uh, sometimes we have guardians or parents showing partial treatments, preferential treatments, right? Some parents are strict, just plain strict. Some are too busy. They, they work all the time. They don't have time for the family. And you're just kind of going down the line helping me see why some of these concepts and images of God if parents are authority, and then we look and see God, he being authority, sometimes they get twisted, isn't that right? But God's not like that. God is a good savior. I, I shared with you on the last time some of the things that God did for me right in my pain. Some of the things he did for my family coming up when I was a little boy. He did it for me, and he was bringing me back to his. I was, I was loving your family then. I was loving you then. And, um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just good. But I'm going to bring this to a conclusion now. I, I want you to know this. God loves you. And God will do what he needs to do to communicate that love to us I look back over these 40 years my God he's been good to me my God he's been good to me you say well have you have tried oh I've got plenty of those but God is good you know what I told him I said God I wouldn't trade you. No silver, no gold. Oh, God. You've been too good to me. Hallelujah. In spite of me. Are you hearing me? He's been good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Let me hasten to conclusion. You can, you, you, you look at the fish, you look at the water, the oceans, and, and you see God fill the oceans with fish and fowl and uh, fishes and, 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 and whales and, and, and marine life, right? If you take that fish out of the water, he dies. He was made for the waters. You see the trees and the shrubberies, the grass. You pluck up a tree from the ground, from the earth. What happens to that tree? Because it was made for the earth. Isn't that right? Now 
last thing he made, he said, let's make man in our image and likeness. Yeah. If you take man out of God, he dies. He dies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me read something. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done here. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says here, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past she walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. And the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath, even as others. Somebody say this, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his what kind of love? Great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you're saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his what? Kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, I've loved you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness I've drawn you. First John 3 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. He says God did not send his son into the world to, to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is love. You're reaching out. And one writer calls it that steadfast love. Steadfast love. He's committed to loving us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, so he says, Receive my love. Receive my love, he said. And what do you mean receive? The word receive, it says to act as a receptacle or container. To assimilate through the mind. To get or accept something that is sent or given to you. Hallelujah. It means to greet with open arms. It's another Take possession. Receive that love. God moves in the midst of his people. And, and the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and forth, back and forth. Throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are sincere toward him. God's looking for somebody to, to minister to. God's looking for somebody that he might show his great power to. Hallelujah. God is good. I want to pause and give him a note of praise. He's been good to me. He's been good to my soul. He's been my water. He's been my bridge over troubled waters. He's been a rock in a weary land. He's been a strong tower against my enemies. Hallelujah. He's been my deliverer when I went through a wilderness. Hallelujah. 
He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's committed to rescuing us and to helping us get there. He's committed to it. I don't care what's going on in our world, saints of God. God wants to pour his love on us and for us to receive it and have a joyful attitude that God got it under control no matter what it looks like in this world. He's so good. I feel fired up today. Ah, Jesus. God has been, I, I can't emphasize it enough. I'll share this with him. In conclusion, I had my mentor. He, God began to prosper him in a year. And so I was struggling. I was struggling financially, and so I started having a little attitude, subtle, about his doing well. He didn't know it. Well, he, maybe he knew it because he was a deserting, but I sure didn't want him to know it. But a little jealous there. And then one day I had occasion to go with him, Midwest, where he got started in the U.S., And he drove by a place where he started out, he and his wife. And the place was right there next to a prostitute's house. And when he drove by, I looked on his face and I saw a tear. He was grateful to God. But he never forgot where God brought him from. Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't. I, I, I didn't because all I saw was uh, God was blessing him now. I, I didn't understand where he came from. I remember him telling me Sometimes it got so bad all through the night. Just living next door. And uh, but I said, God forgive me for judging him. I didn't understand. I was just looking at the outward. So we must never be jealous of somebody. Bless them. Rejoice with them that rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know what God took them through. But if you're faithful, he's not a respecter of persons. Isn't that right? The word has a lot of scriptures that validates who God is. All that's contrary to those wrong images and concepts. God is good. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. Isn't that right? I want you to look at your neighbors and neighbor. From this day forward. Treat, Lord, treat God good. Like you know he's good. Come on, let's give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you're standing on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join us in prayer, if you will. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for the viewing audience. We thank you for those, Lord God, that you've spoken to. We thank you, Lord, that you are love. Thank you for encouraging our hearts to understand that God is love. 
through your mighty acts of kindness you've shown to us and to the world. We must understand that God is good, full of mercy and compassion. Touch these, Lord, who are looking by way of television. Let the glory of your presence encompass them. Father, release the power of your love and your healing life to them now. Father, we'll give your name to glory. We'll give your name to honor. Thank you for them. Thank you for turning hearts back to you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe someone sold God short. Something you were believing God for and he didn't answer it so you decide you're going to not serve him. God wants you to know that he loved you with a perfect love. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you come on back to God? You know he's been good. If you'll assess your life from start to finish, you'll, you'll, you've got to agree with me that God's been good to you in spite of the things that you've gone through. Turn your heart back to God now. And let God complete the process in your life. Thank you for that man. Thank you for that woman. Thank you, Lord God, for those. Give them the strength now, the grace for humility to return to you. In the name of Jesus, we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name. Praise God. I want to address the audience or maybe someone in the midst of us. But you've been crying out to God for a peace of mind. It seemed like the pressures of life and circumstances has just backed you up against the wall. But Jesus want me to let you know today that he hear your cry. And he's faithful to do just what you ask, what you've been crying out for. He want to give you that peace. That surpass all of your understanding. If you would just trust him and believe, he promised to meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody at your wit's end. Your last hope was to hear this message today. But God said, I'm meeting you at your need. And God said, if you trust him, he'll turn it around for you. Hallelujah. Reached out to, for help. You reached out to man, but nobody would seem to be sensitive or available or could meet that need. But Jesus, the give of all good things will give you just what you need. You need hope and an expected end. And God is faithful to give you just that. You can't see your way, but he is the way. Hallelujah. He's a bridge over troubled waters. Hallelujah. He's a sure foundation. And he'll never fail. Lord, we thank you for meeting these, Lord. At their wit's end. God, turn it around for them. In the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, you turned it around for me one day. 
and you didn't disappoint me, Lord. And I'm forever grateful. Bless these in Jesus' name. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise for your faithful that promise. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord.